Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today we'll be cooking braised lamb shanks. Well, Easter's right around the corner and lamb is a great dish to serve at Easter dinner. So today we're gonna be showing you our version of braised lamb shanks. All right, we're gonna start by slicing up some leeks for our recipe today. Uh, this is kind of gonna be our onion component of this recipe. Um, leeks kind of look like a giant green onion, but they're a bit milder and sweeter than green onions, uh, but just have a great aroma and flavor. They do tend to be a bit dirty on the inside sometimes. You can see some layers of dirt in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slice these up. Uh, we wanna go with about, let's say quarter inch slices. And then we're gonna soak them in some water and let that dirt just sort of seep out of there. We'll rinse them a couple of times before we start cooking them. And we're using just these lighter green and white parts of the leeks. The green parts of the leeks are quite a bit tougher at the ends there. So we'll just get these into some clean, cool water. The leeks want to float, which is great because when you agitate them and they start to soak that dirt off of them, the dirt drops to the bottom and you're left with clean leeks. So we'll just let those soak for a little bit while we dice up some carrots. So we're looking for about three cups of leeks and we're gonna go for about one cup of diced carrots. All right, we're also gonna need some garlic for this recipe. We're using three good sized garlic cloves. And because we're doing a long braise on our lamb shanks today, I'm not really worried about breaking these down. Just crushing them will be enough. They'll get softened up in the braise. So what we have here, about a half dozen lamb shanks. These are about a half pound each. This is grass-fed lamb uh, from right here outside of Wichita, Kansas. At Graze the Prairie brought these over for us. You'll probably want to go one or two per person, just depending on how hungry everyone is. We're gonna cook six of them today, but you could easily fit a couple more in the Dutch oven with this recipe. Now we're gonna use just a little bit of duck fat uh, as a binder so we can season these up. We wanna get these seared off in our Dutch oven before we start the braise uh, to create a little crust on the outside and to give us some fawn to work with to flavor our braising liquid. Today we're seasoning with the Cattleman's Grill Steakhouse seasoning. Lots of great herbs and salt. And we're gonna be seasoning a lot of liquid for this braise, so we can kinda of go heavy on the seasoning right now. Uh, it won't be an overload in the end. All right, so we've got the Lodge seven quart Dutch oven. We've got high heat. We're gonna put down a little bit of olive oil and then just kinda of working in batches, we're gonna get our lamb in here and put a little crust on the outside. I love this part because it's instantly aromatic. You smell in the lamb, you smell in those spices and they're just getting that nice char on the outside. All right, so it doesn't take long, just about a minute to get some good color on there before you flip those over. Now you guys can do this either on the stove top, on the side burner, your gas grill, or over direct flame on your grill. We're just doing it on the burner today to kind of make it easier for you to see. But if you're doing this on your grill at home, you just want to crank that temperature up. Go for like 450, 500 degrees and try to get over the direct heat. All right, we're pulling off the first round. Again, remember, we're just giving them some color. We're not actually cooking these through yet. So don't be scared to put them back on the same pan that they came off of. Gonna go in with the next round. We're creating some really nice fond on the bottom of this pan, which is gonna add a lot of flavor. And that's the reason why we do this in batches. If you overcrowd that pan, you'll have a hard time getting a nice sear on there. And then you're just kind of steaming them and not getting any real color. All right, we're gonna decrease the heat just a little bit now, kind of over a medium heat. So if you're doing this on your grill, just slide it to the indirect side. 
We throw in our leeks and our carrots. And since we haven't minced the garlic down, we have large chunks, we can go ahead and throw those in at the same time. I'm gonna sprinkle in just a little bit of our smoked salt as well to help draw out some of the moisture. All right, we've got the pan deglazed and our veggies are starting to soften up here now. So we're gonna add the remainder of the ingredients, including a few dried chipotles here. It's gonna add some nice smokiness and earthiness. We're gonna throw in a bay leaf Got about a half teaspoon of cumin. And we'll do about the same amount, half teaspoon of that steakhouse seasoning. Next I've got one can of San Marzano tomatoes. Kind of break these up a little bit. They'll break down as they braise, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's go ahead and get our lamb shanks back in here now. We'll kind of nestle these in. And then we're gonna get our braising liquid on top of that. For that braising liquid, we've got two cups of Pinot Noir and two cups of vegetable stock. So you can see everything's kind of covered. Even if you have some that's a little exposed, say you've got eight shanks in here and they're sticking out a little bit, don't worry about it. You can always turn those during the cooking process. Now I'm gonna bring this up to a simmer before I put it on the grill. If you're already on the grill, don't worry about this step. It just gets you there a little bit faster. Your braise is probably gonna take about an hour and a half if you get that simmer going before you get it on the grill. Might just take a little longer if you start out on the grill. All right, so now that I've got this up to a simmer, I'm gonna throw a lid on it and we'll get it on the grill. Today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640 pellet grill and we're running at 350 degrees. Just slide this right kind of over that firebox area so it gets some really good heat. That's going to come up to temperature and everything's going to start to break down. Now we're not cooking our lamb to a time or a temperature. What we're looking to do is just completely break it down. It should almost be falling off the bone when it's done. All right guys, it's been about an hour and 45 minutes. Our lamb is super tender right now. Come take a look. Just simmering away. I'll fish one out of here so you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, look at that. Just coming off the bone. If you probe it, no resistance. These are done. So what I'm gonna do now is take our lamb shanks out, and set those aside, and then we're gonna take this braising liquid and turn it into a sauce. So we're gonna transfer all this over to the Vitamix. Pop the lid on there. I'm gonna take this little lid off because when you're blending hot stuff, tends to want to explode. And we'll just ramp this up. All right, it's gonna need a little bit of salt. I'll get a taste first. Ooh, that's tasty. Super earthy. It doesn't need much salt, actually. Those chipotles have a nice little kick to them, but it's not overly spicy. All right, our sauce is all set. Now we got a lot of earthy flavors going on with this. So there's one thing I wanna do to kind of balance that out as a finishing touch, and that's to make a grimolata, which is typically parsley, garlic, and lemon zest, but we're gonna be using lime zest today to kind of go along with the chili flavors that we've got going on in our sauce. Now, instead of using like a microplane, which be, would be a really fine zest, I'm using the box grater today because I want this to have a little bite to it. I don't want it to be super fine. You're just taking off that top layer. You don't want to get down into that pith because that's bitter, but that top layer has really great flavor and aroma. So, zest of one line.
Then we're gonna take a couple cloves of garlic here. We wanna mince this down super fine because we're serving it raw essentially. So it's got a lot of bite to it. The bite's a good thing in this situation, but too much of it would not be very nice. One thing you can do when you're trying to get your garlic super fine is to kind of press it out with the knife. It smashes it and helps break it down a little better. All right, that looks good. And then we're gonna go for about a quarter cup of minced parsley. Here's a little tip we've talked about in the past, but just as a reminder, when you're mincing your fresh herbs, it's a good idea to try and slide through the herb rather than mashing it down because it, it does less damage to the leaves. Now when you smash into it, you're actually smashing the oils out of the leaves and the oils are what give these herbs their aroma. So especially in a case like today's where we're actually serving it fresh, it's not getting cooked into something, we wanna make sure that we're a little bit delicate with it so that we preserve as much of that aroma as possible. Just give that a mix. All right, I'm gonna plate this up over a bed of rice today. It'd also be great with sweet potatoes or mashed potatoes. down. Stand one up. How pretty is that? Spoon some of our sauce over the top. Ah, the aromas are killing me. What a bright, beautiful color too. And just a sprinkle of that gremolata over the top. Beautiful color pop, extra brightness. All right, before I take a bite, I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit more of that smoked salt that we used earlier. Ooh, just coming right apart. Ooh. That sauce is killer. And I love that gremolata on top garlic pops out. It's a little bit bright. This is a fantastic dinner for the whole family. You throw a grip of shanks in that Dutch oven on the grill for a few hours and you've got Easter dinner. But thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to head over to atbbq.com to check out all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, please hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.